Do you find yourself drinking the same old wines day in and day out, night in and night out, week in and week out? Today we're looking at some alternative wines that uh, you've likely never tried and will definitely want to add to your growing wine list. people like to stick with what they know, to what they've been used to drinking and uh, are afraid to try something different. Maybe you're afraid to try something different because uh, you don't want to take a chance that you won't like it. You know, it's okay that you have your favorite wines. Uh, we all have our tried and true go-to wines, but today is a great day to discover delicious new options and engage our palates in new ways. In this episode, we're going to look at different wines as potential alternatives to your go-to's. Honestly, a lot of these wines will taste similar to your old standbys, so I think you'll find the adjustment really pretty easy. After watching this video, you'll be able to, to expand your wine horizons and not be so boring. <laughs> Keep in mind, at any time if you like what you hear, click like and subscribe and hit the little bell so you'll be notified when there's a new post. Also, make sure you share this with your wine friends. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Up front, I want to thank uh, Shauna Clark, a freelance uh, writer and fellow consultant based in New York City for some of her insights. Uh, we're on the same wavelength when it comes to helping fellow wine lovers uh, in broadening their, their uh, experience. Using your favorite everyday bottles as a jumping off point, uh, here are some alternative wines uh, to try next time you're ready to pop a cork. If you like Chardonnay, try Chenin Blanc. Chardonnay is a really versatile white wine. Its styles run the gamut uh, from crisp, mineral-driven Chablis to, to full body with big, buttery, oaky flavors coming out of California. Chenin Blanc is one of the 18 noble grapes in the world and shows the same range of styles as Chardonnay. Now, as a quick side note, you can learn more about what I mean by noble grapes by checking out my series, Noble Grapes. Anyway, uh, Chenin Blanc is highly aromatic with good acidity and like an unoaked Chardonnay, there are lots of delicious orchard flavored fruits uh, in addition to some chamomile and pear. If you decide to go with a Chenin Blanc, the best ones come out of South Africa and France. In South Africa, Chenin Blanc has become the go-to white wine. There is more Chenin Blanc planted there than in the rest of the world combined. Number two, if you like Pinot Grigios, try Gruner Veltliner, or some will call it Veltliner. Like Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio is often the go-to wine for many wine drinkers. The good ones come out of Italy, a Frioli and the Alto Adige region, and usually shows nice mouth-watering acidity and inviting apples and pear flavors. It's the wine to pair with fish or for that matter any shellfish. If you want something that fits the fresh lively profile of a Pinot Grigio, try Gruner Veltliner. The varietal which is native to Austria has both orchard and citrus fruit flavors with a, a balanced minerality and some flint which is what helps it pair so well with oysters, clams, and shellfish. Many top producers also make gruners that can age extremely well. If you're looking for a wine to go with shellfish, clams, and oysters, the gruner is your wine. By the way, the best time for oysters and your gruner are in the R months. That's any month that ha of the year that has an R in it. And the best months are the months that end in R, September, October, November, and December. Okay, next, if you like Sauvignon Blanc, try Albarino. Sauvignon Blanc has two or three basic taste profiles. Its aromatic runs from uh, tropical citrusy, grapefruity sort of fruit notes with New Zealand uh, to the more sophisticated and savory stony and citrusy aromas coming out of Sancerre. The U.S. Sauvignon Blanc falls sort of in between those two. Uh, each Sauvignon Blanc drinker has a preferred style. All prized Sauvignon Blanc offers versatile and refreshing qualities. 
Albarino from Spain is similar in personality with bright fruit, some honeydew and nectarine and a, a zesty freshness on the palate. However, it's not going to have the gigantic citrus and grapefruit like coming out of Australia and New Zealand. It's more like the, uh, the French and, and, and U.S. Sauvignon Blancs. If you like Simeon, try Vignet. In Bordeaux, Simeon is the third most planted white grape after Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay. It's often used as a blending grape, a lending body and floral uh, and also spicy notes to a wine. Vignet is another one of the 18 noble grapes in the world and uh, with its round texture and mouthfeel can also exhibit the same lovely floral aromas as Simeon plus hints of white peach and other orchard fruits. If you enjoy fuller body whites, this is one to taste. If you like champagne, try California or New Mexico sparkling wine. Uh, whether at the most elegant of festivities or paired with fried chicken and french fries, everybody loves a glass of bubbly. Now while champagne is famous world over, many other regions like California and New Mexico have also carved out a nice niche for quality sparkling wines. Now coming out of the States, they're just called sparkling wines, but many use the same method of making sparkling wine as they do in France, the method Champagnese or the method traditionnel. Uh, that was perfected actually in the French region of Champagne. Uh, something even better is these high quality alternatives are often priced less, sometimes way less than Champagne, making them an affordable luxury. Now, how are you doing there? Are these alternatives something you'd be interested in? Is this information helpful? Is it making sense? If it is, tell me what you like or just write great alternatives in the comments below. We just finished our whites. Let's take a look at some reds. If you like Pinot Noirs, try Senso. Currently one of the world's most beloved grapes, Pinot Noir is highly revered in both Old World and New World regions. Burgundy producers are considered the, the gold standard for Pinots, but great expressions of Pinots are coming out of, and actually from all over, the U.S. The West Coast, for instance, from uh, the Willamette Valley in Oregon to California's Anderson Valley, Russian River Valley, and the Central Valley, or the Central Coast, and many more. If you're a fan of Pinot Noir's light body, red fruit, and spice, give Senso a try. You'll also pick up on some black tea, violet, and uh, some red currant. Senso is frequently used as a blending grape in the Southern Rhone River Valley, including Chateauneuf de Pop, but some winemakers are beginning to put it in the spotlight as a single varietal. And by the way, here's a quick tip. While you can drink uh, this one at room temperature, I say try it slightly chilled. Either way, it's a knockout. Next up, if you like Malbec, try Tempranillo. Malbec originally came out of Southern France and uh, have increased in popularity over the last 10 years. Uh, their bold, assertive flavors make it a favorite among red wine drinkers. For an equally powerful red, try Tempranillo. Tempranillo is one of the, the unsung 18 noble grapes in the world. While Tempranillo is most closely associated with Spain, New World areas like Argentina and California are also producing some delicious uh, versions. Actually, watch uh, those coming out of Texas. I spent some time uh, there about a year ago. It's one of the U.S.'s most exciting new wine regions and is becoming a, a source of high quality Tempranillo. A deep red fruit and luscious spices show how winemakers in the state are ex excelling with uh, its full bodied red wine. You'll pick up black cherry, dill, fig, and a little bit of cigar box. You've got some great flavors with moderate tannins. Now, if you like Cabernet Sauvignon, try Zinfandel. The U.S.'s and possibly the world's most planted uh, grape, Cabernet Sauvignon has uh, brought fame to many California winemakers. But long before there was Cabernet Sauvignon, there was Zinfandel. Now, several of you have, have asked me to do an episode on Zinfandel. As I indicated to you, that's coming early next year. Anyway, Zinfandel is a cousin to Primitivo from Italy, and there's a raging debate about whether it originated in Croatia or in Italy. <laughs> now, actually, that's kind of funny because how raging can a debate be over where a grape is from? 
<laughs> Anyhow, uh, it was planted in California as far back as the 1800s, so it's actually considered America's heritage grape. Many Zen vines survived prohibition, and today these old vine Zinfandels are producing full-bodied, luscious uh, red wine with soft yet structured tannins and a lot of finesse. I think of the Zins as a soft tannin cab with a little bit of spice, cinnamon, and sweet tobacco. This is a great red wine for meat coming off the grill. If you like Syrah, try Nebbiolo. Quietly elegant, the peppery black fruit Syrah, especially from France's Northern Rhone and Washington State, often uh, reveal uh, silky tannins and long, lengthy finishes. Nebbiolo, another one of the 18 noble grapes in the world, uh, is the varietal behind Piedmont's uh, famed Barolo and Barbaresco wines. It delivers the same balance of fruit and savory notes of, as the Syrah. The beautiful red fruit shine through with just a touch of rose tar and uh, leather blended in. Folks, I challenge you to break out of your uh, bubble this summer and try some of these beautiful wines. Well, there you have it. Everything you need to know about some of the key white and red alternative wines to round out your tasting pleasure. Thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. If you got something out of it, make sure you let me know in the comments below. Until next time, cheers. Hey Posse, again I wanted to give a shout out to Shanna Clark for her insight. Shanna, you really helped us take this video to the next level. Now if you want to know more about Shanna and connect uh, with the amazing work she's doing, we'll have some of her links in the description of this video.